Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the another revision session for NEET for chemistry. In this particular session, we'll be dealing with certain questions which are based on organic chemistry precisely from your grade 12. So now let us have a look at these questions. So the very first question here is the decreasing order of nucleophilicity among the nucleophiles. So here you have been given four different nucleophiles. This is your nucleophile A, this is B, this is C and this is D, right? Now what are they asking you to, you know, write the order here is the decreasing order of nucleophilicity. So starting with uh, the one which is having highest nucleophilic power followed by the least and oh, towards the end you need to check with the compound which is showing the least nucleophilic behavior, okay. Now the question is how do you approach these kind of you know uh, uh, problems? You need to understand first and foremost thing if they are talking about the nucleophilicity, if they are talking about the nucleophilicity what does it mean is the ease with which they are capable of donating the lone pairs of electrons, okay. They are capable of donating the lone pairs of electrons, right. Now one thing is very much clear that all these four options are having their lone pairs of electrons. Like if you notice here, there is a negative charge on this oxygen. There is a negative charge here on this oxygen. Negative charge here is actually, you know, precisely on carbon and finally there is a negative charge on this particular oxygen as well, okay. Now the ease with which the lone pairs of electrons which are obviously this as associated with the negative charge on oxygen. If they can be given easily, that particular substance is going to be a stronger nucleophile. Now I am very much sure that you will be able to understand that, you know, if you consider option A or, you know, structure A and structure D, the lone pairs of electrons are actually involved in the resonance. So for example, suppose if I consider the first structure here, you are having CH3, C double bond O, O negative charge, right? So if you notice here, you are having lone pair alternate pi bond, right? So definitely these electrons could be a part of resonance and hence we can say that these lone pairs of electrons may not be readily available for donation, right? So if I write its resonating structure here, you are going to have these electrons shifted here, these electrons shifted here. So possible structure here could be CH3, C single bond O with a negative charge and of course there is a double bond O, yes or no? So if these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen, if they are involved in resonance, obviously they cannot be easily donated to any electrophile or positive center. Now same is the case when we consider structure D, right? Here also these lone pairs of electrons on oxygen could be occupied into the resonance, right? So one thing is clear, neither A nor D could be a stronger nucleophile, I mean amongst these four, right? So now let us have a look at option B and option C, I mean these two structures. So here B is nothing but methoxide ion and here you are having what cyanide ion. Now if you notice here, the negative charge in case of methoxide ion, it is present on oxygen, right? which is obviously more electron negative element. However, in case of cyanide ion, when it is behaving like a nucleophile, the negative charge is actually on carbon, which is less electronegative, right? Now, obviously we know that if there is an element which is lesser electronegative and if you are, you know, assigning a negative charge to it, obviously that species will become little unstable, okay? We can say that the negative charge will be more stabilized by the relatively uh, more electronegative element. So definitely when I consider carbon and oxygen, we know that oxygen is more electronegative, right? And because it is more electronegative, this negative charge will be uh, stabilized first of all, right? In a better manner compared to the cyanide ion. And all the more, none of these structures, they are showing what resonance, right? So the lone pairs of electrons can be easily donated. But the question mark is of these two, which one will donate? Without any doubt, it is cyanide ion. Why? Because the negative charge here is present on 
lesser electronegative element. So we can say negative charge on less electronegative element. So I'm sure now after this discussion you'll be able to understand that here cyanide ion is the one which has got maximum nucleophilicity, right? Now after that without any doubt it should be methoxide ion, right? Now from A and D if I want to consider which one will show higher tendency to lose electrons it is going to be A because it does not involve much of an extent of the resonance because again if you notice here you are having sulfur here and these electrons when they are given to the resonating structure they will be more delocalized okay. So the extent of resonance in structure D is going to be maximum right compared to A. So your order should be C having maximum uh, nucleophilicity followed by B followed by A and finally it is D. Yes or no? So without any doubt I hope you understand here that option A is going to be your correct answer. Right? Now likewise of course they can ask you different uh, set of nucleophilicity. Please take into consideration the tendency to lose electron also along with that the solvent characteristics if they are asking you. Okay? So this part is very much clear. I hope you get it. Yeah. So let's have a look at the next question here. SN1 reaction is feasible in. You have been given these four options. Of course, all of these are either alkyl halides or aryl halides, right? Now, when I consider SN1 reaction, we know that it leads through the formation of carbocation okay carbocation as an intermediate yes or no so without any doubt we need to check in which of these following reactions the carbocation which is formed is more stable the one which is going to be more stable obviously that particular reaction will be favored for SN1 reaction correct so if you consider option A here it is tertiary butyl chloride correct so now it's Carbocation here is going to be without any doubt a tertiary carbocation, right? So in option A, the intermediate which you are getting is the tertiary carbocation. In option B, the intermediate which you will be getting obviously is going to be what? Primary carbocation, right? Option C, you are going to have a phenyl carbocation, okay? And finally, in option D, it is CH2, CH2. So again, this is a primary carbocation. Yes or no? Now the thing is, of all these carbocations, which is going to be most stable? So without any doubt, if you notice the third, uh, the first structure, it is tertiary carbocation. There are nine alpha hydrogen atoms, so it is going to be uh, showing hyperconjugation as well as, of course, it is showing inductive effect. And we know that tertiary carbocation is having higher stability provided another structure doesn't have a resonance right so this is the one now this is definite this is tertiary this is primary this is phenyl now remem remember this phenyl carbocation is having least stability amongst these okay and finally you are having again this as a primary carbocation right now the point here is which of these uh, reaction is feasible for SN1 so because this particular tertiary carbocation is more stable, we can clearly see that option A is going to be your correct answer, right? I hope it is very much clear to you all. So in such kind of questions, please look at the stability of the intermediates which are formed here. Moving on with the next question, the treatment of CH3MGX, which is basically the Grignard reagent. With CH3, C triple bond CH, basically it is propyne. So the treatment of this Grignard reagent with propyne will produce options are given to you. You are having a propene, but 2 ine but 2 ene and finally methane. Yeah. Now, understand one thing here that this CH3, C triple bond CH, which is propyne, it is having a terminal uh, triple bond. Now what is the significance of having a terminal triple bond is that 
This particular hydrogen is actually the acidic hydrogen, H plus. It is acidic hydrogen here. Now, when it is treated with CH3 MgX, right? CH3 MgX. Now, we very well know that in this particular compound, in the Grignard reagent, the R group is actually a negative part and MgX is a positive part without any doubt, correct? So, when propyne is actually treated with methyl magnesium halide, this particular ion, one propenyl ion, you know, obviously if, if H plus is gone, there will be a negative charge on this particular carbon, right? So, it will behave as a nucleophile. And of course, if it is behaving as a nucleophile, it is going to attack the positive center. So, right, so here this particular carbon will be going off with MgX. So, your product, one of the product which should be formed here is going to be CH3, C, triple bond C, MgX, right? So, quite obvious, this negative part, it actually takes up this H plus. So, in short, you will be having another product which is formed as methane, right? So, obviously, of all these options, none of the options you are getting this as the answer, yes or no? But, obviously, methane is there and that's the reason option B is your correct answer. Is it very much clear? So, in this case, as I told you, because it is terminal uh, alkyne, uh, propenyl, uh, you know, propane, rather, propyne is acting as a nucleophile of its negative charge basically, so propenyl ion. So, that is acting as a nucleophile, it is attacking the MgX part and hence the product which you are getting is these two products, right? So, methane is given to you as the answer. Let's move on with the next part here, next question. When but3ene2ol reacts with aqueous solution of HBr, Product formed is 3 bromo but 1 ene, 1 bromo but 2 ene. You will get a mixture of both A and B, and 2 bromo but 2 ene. These are the possible options, possible products, right? So, first and foremost thing, let us have a look at the structure of but 3 ene 2 all. So, without any doubt, here you are having 1, 2, 3. Four, four carbon atoms, yes. At the second carbon, you are having OH group and here you are having a double bond, right. So, obviously now if I fill it with hydrogen atoms, so CH2, CH, CH and without any doubt it is CH3. Now, remember this, you are reacting this with HBr and it actually involves uh, electrophilic addition reaction mechanism. So, again, this particular reaction is taking place through the formation of carbocation, right? So, if I, if I consider its uh, carbocation formation, it's, it's going to be like this, CH2, double bond C, H, C, H, CH3 with, of course, the positive charge on this carbon. Now, if you notice here, this particular positive charge is alternate to the lone pairs of electrons or rather pi electrons. So, definitely because they are in conjugation, resonance can take place. So, that means this particular positive charge is actually resonance stabilized. However, this particular positive charge on carbon will attract the, the electrons from Br negative and that's why when Br minus from HBr okay, reacts with this particular carbocation, what could happen is you are going to get bromine at this particular carbon. So, your product is going to be CH2, double bond CH, single bond CH, Br, CH3, right, which is your option A, that is 3 bromo but 1 E. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. So, you are Bromine is present at the third carbon, so you are, you are having 3 bromo but 1A. However, as I told you that this particular carbocation is resonance stabilized. 
Now, because it is resonance stabilized, we can say that if these electrons are shifting here, right, what could be its resonating structure? It will be CH2 with a positive charge, single bond CH, double bond CH, CH3, right? And of course, Br minus can attack this carbon as well, right? And your product which could be formed here is going to be CH2Br, single bond CH, double bond CH, CH3, right? So which is basically one bromo but to ene. So both these compounds are possible when you are reacting but 3 ene to all with HPR, right? So definitely from this discussion, I'm sure you'll be able to understand that your answer here should be C. You'll get a mixture of both these products, right? I hope you got the clear understanding with respect to this. Again, you need to look into the relative stability of the intermediate which is formed here, okay? All right, so let's move on with the next question here. 2,6 dimethyl heptane on monochlorination, it produces how many derivatives? Now, very important, first and foremost thing they are saying monochlorination. So, you could have only one chlorine into the structure, right? So, how many derivatives could be possible? 5, 6, 3, 4, okay? So, first and foremost thing, let us quickly write the structure of 2,6 dimethyl heptane. So, here you are having 7 carbon atoms. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? At the second carbon, you are having a methyl group. At the sixth carbon, you are having the methyl group, correct? Now, they're asking how many monochlorination products could be there, right? So, I'll just fill it with the hydrogen atoms here. So, here you are having CH2, 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 CH, CH3, CH3. Now, if you notice, this structure is kind of a symmetrical structure, right? If you, if you try to put a plane here, looking at this structure, right? You can see it is divided into two equal parts. So, chlorine, of course, you know, it can replace any one of the hydrogen. Either way, you are going to get the same product, okay? So, one of the possible product could be, monochlorination product could be either at this carbon or this carbon. So, this is one possibility, right? Okay, next possibility is what? Chlorine can replace this particular hydrogen here. So, the second possibility is here. Third possibility, without any doubt, I'm sure you will be able to understand here, this particular carbon. And finally, this could be the fourth one, wherein hydrogen could be replaced, right? So, these are the four possible monochlorination products. Now, if you notice here, exactly same way you are, you could get it here, but eventually it is the same thing, right? So, whenever you are getting such kind of, you know, uh, questions, please make sure that you draw the structure and try to find if there is any symmetry. Then, you will avoid any repetitivity into the structures, okay? So, from this particular discussion, you will realize that there could be four different possible monochlorination products which could be there, right? And that's the reason your answer here should be option D. Clear? Likewise, instead of monochlorination, they could ask you monobromination also. Any basically halogenation reaction, please uh, use this particular uh, technique or the method so that you will get the answer in a shorter span of time. Yeah? Okay. The next question here. The main product of the following reaction is, so C6H5CH2CHOH, CH, CH3 twice. Basically, you are having a phenyl group which is present into this particular structure. Now, so suppose if I draw this structure here, it's, it's going to be like this. So, benzene ring here, attached to CH2, CH, OH, CH, CH3 and of course CH3 here as well, right? Now, 
you are treating this particular alcohol this particular alcohol you are treating with the concentrated H2SO4. Now we very well know that concentrated H2SO4 is behaving like a dehydrating agent. So one thing is very much clear when this particular reactant okay alcohol it is treated with concentrated H2SO4 dehydration reaction will take place and that will lead to formation of an alkene. And precisely it is an example of what beta elimination reaction so you could have this hydrogen removed or you could have this hydrogen removed yes or no right. So the point which I want to make here is the intermediate which will be formed here is again the carbocation. So if I consider here CH2 single bond CH with a positive charge on this carbon CH CH3 CH3 right now this is the possibility now if you notice here this particular carbocation is actually a secondary carbocation right now there is a possibility that this particular positive charge can get shifted to this carbon right or it can get shifted to this carbon because of additional stability right now just imagine that if there is a hydride shift taking place here so if I if I write this structure here again so what you could have is benzene ring CH H CH of course with a positive charge CH CH3 twice okay now if I do a hydride shift here to this particular carbon so the intermediate carbocation which will be formed here is going to be CH with a positive charge CH2 CH CH3 twice right now you will realize that this particular carbocation is relatively stable why because it will be resonance stabilized so if this is resonance stabilized obviously this carbocation is uh, favored more and it is uh, you know this will be favored by again release of H plus from this particular carbon right so in short your product which you are going to get here is going to be this benzene with CH double bond CH single bond CH CH3 twice now we very well know that this particular alkene is capable of showing two isomers geometrical isomers one is the cis isomer another is trans isomer and relative stability of the trans isomer obviously is always going to be higher compared to what the cis isomer right and that's the reason option A if you notice is going to be correct answer here why because the high priority groups are kind of opposite to each other so this is going to be the trans isomer and this is going to be your answer so here again please look for the stability of the intermediate which is formed here and based on that you will be able to write their products okay moving on with the next question here now this is like a typical reaction which you already know it is a Rimmer diamond reaction right so here you are reacting phenol with chloroform in alkaline medium so what you are getting here obviously is the aldehyde okay salicylaldehyde along with this you are getting O minus Na plus so now the electrophile which is involved in this particular reaction that is a question so question uh, you know the options here are dichloromethyl cation dichlorocarbene trichloromethyl anion and formyl cation now one thing is very much clear this cannot be the answer this cannot be the option because it is anion now they are asking about the electrophile okay they are asking about the electrophile here right so my answer could be either A or B or D now I'm sure you very well know that the role of this NaOH or KOH into the reaction mixture is to extract H plus from CHCl3 okay so if I write the reaction here you could have CHCl3 combining with OH minus right so you will have here H plus gone right so H plus if it is going off with OH negative you will be left with CCl3 with a negative charge on carbon and of course H2O. Now as I told you carbon being lesser electronegative element it will not be able to hold on to the negative charge strongly right that's the reason from this particular species 
chloride ion goes off with the lone pairs of electrons and you are left with CCl2 with carbon having two electrons here, one lone pair. Now if you notice this is basically dichlorocarbene in which this particular carbon is having its sextet complete. In short, it is having incomplete octet, right? And that's the reason it is acting as a stronger nucleophile which will be able to attack the benzene ring, okay? So here, the, the electrophile is basically dichlorocarbon. So that's why your answer here should be option B. Is that clear? Okay. So moving on with the next question here. The maximum dehydration takes place in which case here? So you have been given different options here. Now look at options A and B. You are having a ketone group and you are having OH groups. Option C, you are just having two OH groups which are opposite to each other. And option D, you are having a methyl group which is attached to a cyclohexanol structure. Now, you understand one thing here that when it comes to the dehydration mechanism, it should have the acidic hydrogen into the structure, okay? And for that, we need to have relatively stronger electron withdrawing group. Now, if you consider this particular structure, let's suppose option B, okay? If you consider this particular structure, option B. Now here in both the cases, by the way, option A as well as option B, can I say here, because you are having a ketone group, it is actually electron withdrawing group, okay? It is electron withdrawing group. And because of which, it shows the presence or, or it increases the acidity of the H plus ion. It increases the acidic hydrogen. And because of which, H plus ion can be easily removed, okay? But which H plus we are talking about? It, we are talking about basically the alpha hydrogen. So instead of H plus, let me write here alpha hydrogen, okay? It increases the acidity of the alpha hydrogen, right? Now, if you look at option B here, this is the alpha hydrogen and this could also be the alpha hydrogen, yes or no? And now, if, if I consider this particular structure, without any doubt, there are two hydrogen present here, right? two alpha hydrogen atoms and if we remove this H plus, right? You are removing this H plus, so definitely this particular carbon should be having a negative charge, right? It's, it will be having a negative charge and it will, uh, this OH will go off as OH minus and it will extract H plus from here, yes or no? So if there is an OH here, what will happen is if this H plus is gone and if this OH minus is also gone, you will be left with its intermediate structure like this. Double bond O. Here you are going to have a carbon with a negative charge and because this OH is also gone, you will have a positive charge here, right? And because of this, obviously these electrons then get shifted here and you will get a formation of alkene here. Right? Now, this is the product of dehydration of this particular compound. Right? So here it is possible that, you know, dehydration can take place. Why? Because ketone group here is increasing the acidic behavior of the alpha hydrogen here. Right? Now, look at option A. Here also you are having a ketone group, but the problem here is there is no alpha hydrogen here. There is no alpha hydrogen here. Without any doubt, there is alpha hydrogen here, right? There is a presence of alpha hydrogen here, but the problem here is OH minus will not be able to extract this H plus so easily. And that's the reason, you know, compared to option B here, option A, this particular structure will not have very high, uh, you know, extent of dehydration. Option Z, you are having two OH groups attached to cyclohexane, right? And we know that OH is actually, we can say in this case, it is just showing, uh, you know, oxygen attached to carbon minus I effect, right? But here also you are having the alpha hydrogen atom, but will not have that much amount of acidic strength generated 
compared to the one which is generated because of the ketone groups. So this also cannot be the answer. This is definitely not the answer. In option D, CH3 in fact is electron donating group. It is electron donating group and it will in fact decrease the acidic strength of the alpha hydrogen atom. Okay. So if you notice of all these options, it is option B wherein uh, you know you are having relatively higher acidic character of the alpha hydrogen atom which can be easily removed and you are getting the formation of alkene here. Right. So definitely the maximum dehydration will take place in this particular structure. I hope you got a clear understanding here. Right. Okay, so this was an interesting question. Again, you know, such kind of questions they can ask you in your entrance level exams, uh, wherein instead of ketone, they can use any other electron withdrawing group. Please understand you have to talk in the context of the acidic strength of the alpha hydrogen atom, right? Okay, moving on with the next question here. In the following compounds, the order of acidity is. So you have been given these four compounds here. Okay. Now, if you notice, they're all the derivatives of phenol, right? Structure A is just phenol. In structure B, there is a methyl group which is attached at the uh, para position. In structure C or uh, third structure, you are having a nitro group attached at the meta position of phenol. And fourth one, nitro group is at the para position of phenol, right? Now, I've told you this that whenever there is a question which is based on relative uh, acidic or basic strength, you need to look at the stability of the corresponding conjugate acids or bases. Okay. So phenol, when we consider here, and if I write its conjugate base, which is basically phenoxide ion. Okay. Right. Now the thing here is this phenoxide ion, the negative charge, if it is stabilized by additional group, then obviously this particular conjugate base will be a relatively more stable base and hence the acidic strength will be more. So in general, we know that presence of, you know, electron withdrawing group. So suppose if I'm saying that this is a O negative here, presence of electron withdrawing group, okay, will increase the acidic strength. Why? because electron withdrawing group will stabilize this negative charge, okay? And presence of electron donating group will actually destabilize the negative charge, okay? Electron donating group. So electron withdrawing group will increase the acidic strength, right? And electron donating group will decrease the acidic strength. So of all these structures, we need to identify first of all, which is going to be your electron donating and electron withdrawing. Now, one thing is very much clear that nitro group is electron withdrawing group. It shows minus I effect as well as minus M effect of which minus M definitely is going to be predominant. So one thing is very much clear that nitrophenol is going to be more acid. Now the question mark is, if nitro group is present at the para position and if nitro group is present at the uh, meta position, which of these two will be able to stabilize the negative charge more effectively? The answer is very much clear that it is the NO2 group which is at the para position. Okay. So para nitrophenol will have maximum acidic strength, obviously followed by the meta nitrophenol, right? Then of these two, if you notice, CH3 group shows plus I effect. Okay, CH3 group shows plus I effect. And because of that, it is going to destabilize the negative charge, right? And hence, it will have the least acidic strength. And of course, phenol could be taken as a reference here. So the first and foremost acidic strength will be fourth one, then the third one, then the first one, and finally the second one. And that's the reason option A is going to be your correct answer. Right? I hope you got a clear understanding of how to determine the acidic strength of the given compounds. Yeah. All right. Moving on with the next question, which of the following reagents will convert propene to one propanol? Propene to one propanol. So if I consider here CH3, CH, double bond CH2, this is propene, right? 
Now you want this to be converted into CH3, CH2, CH2OH, propan 1 all or 1 propanol. Now you can clearly see here that if there is an addition of water, okay, right, then it is definitely going to follow Markovnikov addition. If it is following Markovnikov addition, then this particular reagent will not give you one propanol. Okay. If it will follow Markovnikov addition, OH negative will come to this carbon and of course this will go here. So in fact, you will end up getting propan 2 all. So definitely option A is not the correct answer. Option B, aqueous KOH, again the same thing could happen here. You may get Markovnikov addition. Option C, you are having magnesium sulfate with sodium borohydride in water. Basically, you are carrying out reduction. If you are carrying out reduction, you are not going to get propanol here. So, it is neither A, nor B, nor C. Option D, you are treating with B2H6, which is diborane, followed by reaction with the H2O2 and OH-. This is a very famous uh, reaction, right? Hydroboration oxidation reaction. And in this, the product which is formed is as per anti Markovnikov addition. Anti Markovnikov addition. So that's the reason propene here. When it is treated with B2H6 followed by H2O2 in OH negative alkaline medium, the product which will be formed here is CH3, CH2, CH2OH, right? Clear? So without any doubt, option D is going to be your correct answer here. Yeah? I hope you got the clear understanding here. Okay. Moving on with the next question here. Okay. The increasing order of the rate of HCN addition, hydrogen cyanide addition to compounds A to D is. So the very first compound here is simply formaldehyde, methanol. Next is uh, propanone. Next is you are having phenyl ethanone, basically acetophenone. And here you are having a diphenyl ketone. So when we write the structures of these compounds, here you are going to have H, C, double bond O, H. This is simple, methanol. Next is uh, CH3, C, double bond O, CH3, propanone. The third one, if you see, it is acetophenone. So here you are having benzene with C, double bond O, CH3, right? And finally, here you are having diphenyl ketone. So benzene with C, double bond O, Again, benzene here, right? Now, we know that HCN addition is actually a nucleophilic addition reaction, wherein the nucleophile which is generated is nothing but CN minus, right? This is the nucleophile. And in all these cases, all these four structures, you will realize that the carbon is the positive center wherein this particular nucleophile will come and attack, right? This is the carbonyl carbon, which is the positive center. So in these structures, in these structures, the, you know, the one which will increase the electrophilicity of carbon, of carbonyl carbon, and the second, stearic hindrance. These are the two factors which will come into play. So the one which will increase the electrophilicity of carbonyl carbon will favor the nucleophilic addition reaction. All the more, if there are bulkier groups associated with the carbonyl carbon, then uh, you know the nucleophile may not be able to attack the carbonyl carbon so easily. So if you notice here, first case, uh, it is just formaldehyde. Now, there are two hydrogen groups, uh, hydrogen atoms which are attached to this carbon. There is no methyl group, so obviously there is no bulkiness, first of all, right? And uh, with respect to the carbon, it is showing what electron donating effect, right? So, this is formaldehyde. Now, in case of acetone, obviously methyl groups will be able to uh, provide greater 
plus i effect yes or no it is going to provide greater plus i effect and because of which definitely their reactivity is going to be what lesser compared to what formaldehyde so in general just remember that when it comes to the nucleophilic addition reaction aldehydes are going to be more reactive compared to the ketones so structure a definitely is aldehyde and rest of the structures are ketone of which methyl group here two methyl groups attached now here there is one methyl group and one obviously phenyl group here both the groups are phenyl groups here right so without any doubt you will realize that of all the cases this will show least reactivity towards nucleophilic addition reaction because of the steric hindrance followed by this structure then obviously this one and this one right so increasing order if they are asking you if they are asking you the increasing order you have to start with the least one right so here you will have d then c then b and of course then a so option c should be your correct answer right so two things as i told you electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon and second thing is what this steric hindrance right okay moving on with the next question here we need to select the reagent for the following reaction now the reaction here is very simple you are given cyclohexene which is converted into an open chain compound with two aldehyde groups towards the end terminal aldehyde groups right now one thing is clear that this particular reaction is involving the oxidation reaction right but this oxidation is not by stronger oxidizing agent right why because if it is a stronger oxidizing agent we may end up getting you know these aldehyde groups getting converted into what to the carboxylic acid groups right so seo2 cannot be the answer all the more pcc is generally used for oxidation of the aldehydes or rather you can say alcohols okay so alcohols if you want to convert them into aldehydes you will be able to use pcc pyridinium chlorochromate so we are left with two options here second option b and option c both these reactions are basically what ozonolysis so now if you notice here this reaction i mean this compound you are treating with o3 right and two possibilities followed by this you are treating with zinc in h2o or you are treating with h2o2 in ethanoic acid okay so remember when this bond breaking is taking place here you are going to get c double bond oh c double bond oh this is basically you are getting aldehyde group here okay however however if you carry out this reaction you will get carboxylic acid okay now in the question what they are asking you is the terminal groups which are present are aldehyde groups not the carboxylic acid groups right and that is the reason option b should be your correct answer if that told you that here it is coh and coh then definitely option c would have been your correct answer right so this if you notice your one one two three and four four carbon atoms like this so here you are having ch2 four times cho cho simple straightforward okay so that is the reason option b is going to be your correct answer here all right so moving on with the next question here okay so the question here is an aromatic compound x with molecular formula c9h10o c9 h10o it gives the following chemical test all right now there is only one oxygen here so the one thing is clear it can be aldehyde or it can be ketone could be ether or could be alcohol okay but to support or to get the answer they have given you certain uh, you know uh, indicators here very first it forms 2,4 dnp derivative now the moment you say that it is forming 2,4 dnp derivative it means it is a carbonyl compound which means it can either be an aldehyde or it could be a ketone second it reduces the tolens reagent 
So if it is reducing the tolerance region, so one thing is very much clear, it is not the ketone, it is in fact the aldehyde. Okay, third one, it undergoes Canizero's reaction. Now, what is the prerequisite condition for a Canizero's reaction is that there should be no presence of alpha hydrogen atom. Okay, no presence of alpha hydrogen atom. Okay, and finally, on vigorous oxidation, it will give you 1,2 benzene dicarboxylic acid. What does that mean is if there are two substituents present on the benzene ring, they should be ortho to each other. So the product, you know, this particular compound, if I write, it is COOH and this is COOH, 1 comma 2 dicarbox, uh, benzene dicarboxylic acid. So let us have a look at these options. Now, first and foremost thing, it is definitely not the option C because it is showing a ketone group. It is showing what? Ketone group, right? Now option B as well as option D, it is showing aldehyde group as well as it is showing ethyl group, yes, C2H5 group. But the thing here is in both the cases, they are actually meta to each other, right? And because they are meta to each other, if you carry out the oxidation, you are going to get 1 comma 3 benzene dicarboxylic acids. That means you are going to have COH groups at, you know, meta position to each other. But option A here, you are having aldehyde group as well as ethyl group which are actually ortho to each other and if you are carrying out rigorous oxidation definitely it is going to give rise to this one. So let us see is it meeting all the conditions very first because it is aldehyde it is going to give a positive 2,4 DNP test right. It reduces the tolerance region it, the reason for obviously that is aldehyde group. It does not have alpha hydrogen why because it is benzaldehyde. CHO, it doesn't have alpha hydrogen atom and its oxidation will give you this product, right? So definitely all these conditions are met for option A and hence this will be your correct answer. I hope you got the clear understanding, yes? Moving on to the next one, compound A gives you CH3 twice C, double bond CH, CO, CH3. Let us first of all write this particular structure. So CH3, C, CH3, double bond, CH, C double bond O, CH. This is the structure. The options, if you see here, are acetone, acetaldehyde, propionaldehyde, and formaldehyde. Now, this particular reaction, looking at the options, if you see here, this particular reaction is taking place in presence of dilute alkali, NOH or KOH, okay? So this is a typical example of something which you called as aldol condensation reaction, right? And we know that aldol condensation reaction involves alpha hydrogen atoms and it is taking place in presence of dilute NOH. But the question mark is, looking at this particular option, how do I say which of these options will give you the correct answer? Now one thing is very much clear, formaldehyde is definitely not the answer. Why? Because formaldehyde does not have any alpha hydrogen atom, okay? So you could have acetone, acetaldehyde is basically ethanol and propionaldehyde which is propanol. All of these are having alpha hydrogen atoms. Now let us you know, first of all, write the structure with acetone and let's see whether you are going to get it correct or no, okay? Now, if you consider acetone, we know that it is CH3, C double bond O, CH3, right? And because it is a self-aldol condensation, definitely you are going to have two molecules of acetone reacting with each other. Now, one of them is definitely going to act as a carbon ion donor, another is going to act as what carbon ion acceptor. So let's suppose that this particular structure is acting as a carbon ion donor. So obviously this is going to act as what carbon ion acceptor, right? So in presence of base like NaOH, this particular hydrogen, one of the hydrogen will be gone, alpha hydrogen. So here you are going to have CH2, 
with a negative charge. So this becomes your carbon ion donor. And of course, there is a positive center on this carbon, right? So this carbon ion definitely is going to attack this carbon and you'll be getting a product. So if we write the product here, you will have CH3, C, CH3, O with a negative charge here, obviously. Why? Because these electrons have now shifted to this carbon. Then you are having CH2, C double bond O, CH3. Yes? And if you have a proton associated here, so you could have here OH. So it is basically beta hydroxy ketone. And on further heating, on further heating, there will be dehydration which will be taking place. So this OH will go off with this hydrogen. So you will be left with CH3, C, CH3, double bond, CH, C, double bond, O, CH3. Don't you think this is what the, uh, you know, product which we are expecting, right? So here definitely your answer should be option A, acetone, okay? Now another way of looking at this particular question could be what you count the total number of carbon atoms which are present. Like if you see in the product side, there are a total of six carbon atoms, right? Now you will get these six carbon atoms only when two acetone molecules are connecting with each other. Now definitely propionaldehyde could also be another possible answer, but the problem here is this particular group, ketone, right? That's the reason your answer here is acetone. Yeah, so this was a typical example of aldol condensation reaction in which one of the species is behaving like a carbon ion donor, another is behaving like a carbon ion acceptor. Yeah, all right. Moving on with the next question here. By Canizero's reaction, A is changing into B and C. You are given these, uh, you know, products B and C. So here you are having B, which is nothing but sodium salt of uh, oxalic acid, right? And here you are having C, which is having alcoholic group as well as the sodium salt of carboxylic acid group, right? Now the question is, what is A here? Now we know that first and foremost thing, Canizero's reaction uh, involves self-oxidation reduction reaction, right? So it is shown by those compounds which do not have alpha hydrogen atom, point number one. Right? And it is obviously is taking place in what 50% NaOH solution. Okay. So just let's try to write the products here. If I consider this particular option A. Now if you notice here, you are having CH2OH group, right? And CHO group. Now when you are treating with 50% NaOH, it is this particular aldehyde group which can get converted into carboxylic acid group or alcohol group, right? So the possible products here could be what? Uh, CH2OH. COONA and CH2OH, CH2OH, if it is undergoing reduction, right? Obviously, these are not matching with our options here, correct? Okay. Option B, you are having CH2OH, CH2OH, right? Even if it is undergoing oxidation, both of these will get oxidized. So, you are not definitely going to get these options, B and C, these products, right? Option D, both the groups are aldehyde groups. If both the groups are aldehyde groups, you could get, uh, you know, carboxylic acid group as well as the alcohol group, right? But the point here is, in these products, at least one particular group is carboxylic acid group, which definitely is coming from option C. If you notice here, there is one aldehyde group here. Now, this aldehyde group, if it gets reduced, you will have CH2OH. COONA as a product, right? This is one possibility. Another possibility is what? If this is getting oxidized, CHO group is getting oxidized to carboxylic acid group, okay? So you could have COONA, COONA, because obviously carboxylic acid group will combine with NOH to produce this salt. So if you notice, these products, they actually match with these ones. Right? And that's the reason option C is definitely going to be your correct answer. I hope you get the clear understanding here. Okay? So this was an example of the question based on the Canizero's reaction. Remember, there should be presence of no alpha hydrogen atoms. Right? And obviously it is taking place in 
concentrated alkali yeah so moving on with the next question here the correct order of acidic strength of the compound now if you notice here first and foremost thing all of these are carboxylic acids so here you are having simple ethanoic acid next is you are having a methoxy group which is replacing the hydrogen so there is a methoxy group introduced next is obviously trifluoroethanoic acid and here also you are having two methyl groups are attached to this carbon which is obviously connected to the carboxylic acid so it is two methyl propanoic acid so again in such cases i told you right that whenever they are asking you the acidic or basic strength please look at the stability of the conjugate bases which are formed here now in this case without any doubt this is the conjugate base the carboxylate ion which is obviously resonance stabilized so if to this particular carboxylate ion if you attach electron donating group then what will happen here is that this particular electron donating group will donate its electrons to this carbon and hence it will increase the negative charge density and because it will increase the negative charge density it will you know destabilize the negative charge and hence the stability of this conjugate base will be lowered so in short electron donating group will decrease the acidic strength whereas if you consider here the electron withdrawing group like so here you are having c o o obviously there is a negative charge here you are having electron withdrawing group right so this particular electron withdrawing group is definitely going to destabilize the uh, you know the negative charge or rather it is going to stabilize the negative charge here now because it is going to stabilize the negative charge we can say that it is going to increase the acidic strength right so if you notice here in option 3 option c here you are having cf3 cooh you are having three fluorine atoms which are highly electronegative and that's the reason they are going to pull the electrons or rather pull the electrons from this particular group strongly and hence they will be able to stabilize this negative charge to the maximum extent yes or no now after that if you notice you are having a methoxy group which is attached here in which oxygen ha is having a lone pair of electrons right so if you consider here you are having ch3o ch2 c there is a negative charge here right oxygen and oxygen now because of the lone pairs of electrons and oxygen it is going to pull the electrons towards itself so it is definitely going to show a negative i effect and because it is showing a negative i effect we can say that again it is going to stabilize the negative charge right so maximum acidic strength will be for this particular structure followed by without any doubt b now if you look at option a and d which will have relative higher strength of plus i effect now if you notice here you just have one ch3 group which is present here right however in this particular option you are having actually three or rather more number of alkyl groups which are present which will be able to give rise to relatively higher plus i effect okay now here also there is going to be a plus i effect so both these groups are electron donating groups right but here this particular group is going to destabilize the negative charge to a greater extent and that's the reason this acid that is two methyl propanoic acid is going to be least acidic amongst all right so if i want to write the correct order definitely c will have a maximum strength followed by b then a and obviously then d so option c is the correct answer here i hope you get the clear understanding here moving on with the next part here the following compound is reduced with lithium aluminum hydride this is the compound okay basically propanoic acid now we are reducing this compound with lithium aluminum hydride now this lithium aluminum hydride i'm sure all of you know that it is a specific reducing agent for the carbonyl groups or the carbonyl compounds right it does not affect the double bond it does not affect the double bond so if i reduce this particular compound with the help of lialh4 
the compound which will be getting here is going to be CH2 double bond CH CH2 OH you have definitely carboxylic acid will get reduced to what primary alcohol right this double bond remains intact this double bond remains intact okay so one thing is very much clear option A cannot be the answer because in option A we are reducing a double bond with the help of LiAlH4 which is not possible option B is definitely your answer option C not the answer because this carboxylic acid group is converting to aldehyde all the more double bond is converted to a single bond and finally in option D this double bond is converted into single bond it means that is also reduced and of course carboxylic acid group which is again not possible right so of all these options you will realize that option B is definitely your correct answer right instead of this if they are giving you any other reducing agent which is capable of reducing both carboxylic acid group as well as the alkene group then please your answer should be D in that case like catalytic hydrogenation one possibility right okay next question the correct order of increasing basic nature now this is with respect to our basis for NH3 for CH3 NH2 and CH3 twice NH now here they have not given you which medium they are talking about so by default we will be taking in a gaseous state okay because you could have aqueous solution as well also in the gaseous state but the order is differing. So just remember that suppose if I am considering nitrogen with 3 alkyl groups attached to it so basically tertiary amine right wherein nitrogen has having a lone pair of electrons you could also have a secondary amine wherein nitrogen is having a lone pair of electron you could have a, a primary amine again there is a lone pair of electron and finally ammonia right now when the you know amine is behaving like a base it is going to give its lone pair of electrons to H plus and it is basically going to form the ammonium ion right so in this particular case if you see nitrogen is having a positive charge nitrogen will have a positive charge nitrogen will have a positive charge and here also nitrogen will have a positive charge and of course all these nitrogen atoms will be associated with hydrogen as well which is coming from the acid right now the point here is in all the cases the positive charge on nitrogen maximum it will be stabilized obviously in case of tertiary amine why because there are three alkyl groups which are acting as electron donating groups and that's the reason you can say here that the extent of plus I effect is going to be maximum right then obviously in case of secondary in case of primary and obviously ammonia will be having least okay so now the you know the compounds which are given to us are ammonia methyl amine or methyl amine and dimethylamine so of these without any doubt you will realize that ch3 and ch3 h this is secondary amine ch3 nh2 without any doubt it is primary and just ammonia okay will be having least basic strength so secondary and primary obviously secondary will be more basic than primary than ammonia right and that's the reason here your answer should be C okay I hope you get the clear understanding moving on with the next question in the chemical reaction so you are given here aniline which is treated with NaNO2 with HCl at 278 Kelvin so you are getting compound A and it is then treated with HbF4 that which is nothing but fluoroboric acid you are getting compound B so the compounds A and B here are nitrobenzene and fluorobenzene, phenol and benzene, benzene diazonium chloride and fluorobenzene and nitrobenzene and chlorobenzene. Now one thing is very much clear this is a fa very famous reaction that is this aniline when it is treated with NaNO2 with HCl you are going to get a diazonium salt okay. So when you are getting this diazonium salt of course this is going to be the structure N2 plus Cl minus benzene diazonium chloride. And when it is treated with HbF4, fluoroboric acid, when it is treated with HbF4, 
you are going to get replacement of this nitrogen by fluorine and hence the compound here is going to be fluorobenzene. The compound here is going to be fluorobenzene. So the compound A without any doubt is benzene diazonium chloride, correct? And B is the fluorobenzene here, right? So definitely option C is your correct answer. The next part here, which of the following is the strongest base? Aniline, then you are having phenyl methyl amine, then you are having uh, CH3 group at the ortho position, so ortho methyl aniline, right? And finally, you are having benzyl group attached to NH2. Now, as I told you, if you want to find the strongest base, you need to look at the stability of the corresponding conjugate acid or you can also have a look at how easily this nitrogen will be able to donate its lone pair of electrons. Clear? Now, if you see here, in the first case, there is a nitrogen on which there is a lone pair of electrons. In, in fact, all the cases, there will be one single lone pair of electrons in all these cases on nitrogen. Now, in aniline, these lone pairs of electrons are actually involved in resonance. And because they are involved in resonance, they cannot be easily available to be given to the H plus ions, right? So is the case within the second structure, these electrons can be again involved in resonance. And of course here as well, why? Because in all the three cases, nitrogen is directly attached to the benzene ring. And because it is directly attached to the benzene ring, its lone pairs of electrons will be involved in resonating structures, right? So definitely they are not readily available to be given to the H plus ions, to the acidic medium, right? However, if you look at option D, you are having NH2 group, again there is a benzene ring, no doubt, but in between there is a CH2 group. So in short, this particular compound becomes an example of what the primary amine, wherein you are having this lone pair of electrons which are not involved in any kind of conjugation or resonance. And because they are not involved in conjugation or the resonance, these electrons can be easily given to H plus ions and hence they will show the basic behavior, right? So of all these options, option D is going to be your correct answer. I hope this is very much clear, right? So definitely they can ask you a few questions based on determining the acidic strength or basic strength. So when they're asking about the basic strength, most likely you'll be coming across the compounds dealing with nitrogen, yeah? The next question, an optically active compound A, C4H11N, very, very important, it is optically active compound, okay? So optically active compound A, on treatment with HNO2, HNO2, it gives alcohol B, which on treating with concentrated H2SO4 at 453 Kelvin gives an alkene. So basically you are having a dehydration reaction taking place here. And that alkene on treatment with HBr gives optically active compound D, which is having a formula of C4H9Br, bromobutane. So what we need to do here is we need to identify compound A. So this is a typical roadmap type of question. Now the, the primary you know condition here is that the starting material as well as the end product here both are optically active. So if at all I, I try to draw certain isomers of bromobutane and identify which one is going to be optically active then I can definitely go ahead solving this question right. So if I go in a retrograde manner here bromobutane I'm sure you will be able to understand here that it is CH3 CH Br CH2 CH3 to bromobutane should be the compound which is optically active right now this bromine either can be at the second carbon or it can be at the first carbon now first carbon if it is present definitely it is not going to show on any optical activity so one thing is very much clear that this particular product option compound D is nothing but 2-bromobutane, right? Now this 2-bromobutane definitely you are going to get it from an alkene which is basically what butene, right? Or butene we can say, 
right? Butuene, you are going to get butanol, and from butanol, uh, you, you are going to get butanol from this primary amine. Now, one thing is very much clear here that because amine is reacting with HNO2 to give you alcohol, it has to be, this compound A has to be a primary amine. It has to be a primary amine, okay? So look at these options, A, B, C, and D. There is an NH2 group here, there is NH2 group here, right? These are primary amines, okay? Option B and D, not possible, right? Because they're not primary amines. Now, if you look at option C, it is NH2 group at the terminal carbon, okay? So it is butane 1 amine. And here it is butane 2 amine. Now, without any doubt, I'm sure you will be able to understand that option A and C, it is option A which is going to be optically active. How? It's going to be CH3, CH2, CH, NH2, CH3, right? So, I'm very much sure that you'll be able to understand that this particular carbon is the chiral carbon here. And because it is chiral carbon, quite obvious it is optically active and hence this will lead to formation of butane 2 all when it is treated with HNO2. This on treatment with concentrated H2SO4 will give you butuene CH3 CH double bond CH single bond CH3 and finally this with HBr is going to give you this final outcome. Yes or no? So, without any doubt, this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D, right? So, A here is nothing but option A, optically active, right? I hope you got the understanding here. Moving on with the next question, the end product in the following sequence of the reaction. All right. Now, here, first and foremost thing, let's, let's have a look at this particular reaction. <coughs> You are having a cyclic structure with NH group and COH group here, carboxylic acid group. Now, what are the reagents which are being used here? So, very first here is lithium aluminum hydride. One thing clear, it is a reducing agent, stronger reducing agent. Next is PCL5. We know that it is a chlorinating agent. NaCN can behave like a nucleophile. CN negative here can behave like a nucleophile. And finally, you are having what H3O plus, basically hydrolysis. Yes? So, we very well know here that if it is first product, first reagent is LiAlH4, it is going to reduce. So, what, which particular uh, species it is going to reduce? Definitely the carboxylic acid, right? So, the first product here could be NHCH2OH, primary alcohol here. Next, you are treating with PCL5, so definitely you are going to get NHCH2Cl, right? Now definitely it can undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction with NaCN, so you are going to get a cyanide or nitrile here, you are going to have NHCH2Cn, right? And this, when it is hydrolyzed, this cyanide group is definitely getting converted to what carboxylic acid group, right? So you will get here NH CH2 COOH. So in short, you have introduced one additional carbon, right? So if this is my final outcome of all these options, you will realize that it is option C, which is going to be your correct answer, right? So this was like, a, again, a type of roadmap question, but in a different manner. You have been given different reagents here and they're asking you to find the end product here. The next question here is the end product again in the following sequence of the reaction. Now here you are given an alkene, which you are allowing it to undergo ozonolysis. Then you are reacting with a base, which is nothing but calcium hydroxide on further heating. Finally, reaction with NH2 NH2, that is nothing but hydrazine in alkaline medium and glycol. Now, one thing is very much clear. If you notice at the end, you are get, having this particular reagent. Now, this particular reagent is definitely used in Wolf-Krishner reaction. 
and this particular re uh, reaction the end product is nothing but the hydrocarbon alkane okay so obviously option c here will be ruled out because here you are given as a ketone okay so option a or b or d could be your answer right so very first thing if you consider here you are treating this alkene with you are carrying out basically ozonolysis so you are going to get the carboxylic acid group here c double bond o o h c double bond o o h right and when it is treated with calcium hydroxide okay there will be decarboxylation which will take place and you will be left with here cyclopentanol because one of the carbon will be gone as a calcium carbonate now with this cyclopentanone is actually treated with NH2 hydrazine in glycol alkaline medium or glycerol you can definitely get here cyclopentane yes so I am very much sure that here you will be able to get that answer B option B is going to be your correct answer here yes the next question here which is hydrolyzed at the faster rate now when I say hydrolyzed at the faster rate we are typically talking about the alkaline hydrolysis okay we are talking about what the alkaline hydrolysis in other words we are talking about either SN1 or SN2 reaction okay so if I consider here in all the cases the first one is you are having a, a chlorine which is attached here so there is uh, 2 chloro 1 chloro or rather 2 chloro 1 phenyl ethane simple here you are having there is a double bond here right there is a double bond here also and finally here you are having what chlorobenzene now one thing is very much clear this particular option is ruled out it is chlorobenzene it does not get easily hydrolyzed right because it uh, may involve formation of phenyl uh, carbocation which is not possible which is not stable as such so option D is ruled out so you have to have from either A or B or C so let's have a look at the intermediates which are formed here so if I consider the first case in this case the intermediate which should be formed here is going to be a carbocation right in the second case also you are going to get the intermediate right so here you are going to have this particular intermediate in the third case you may have this particular intermediate now this is not very much stable so it is also ruled out now if you consider this particular intermediate carbocation this particular intermediate both can show resonance right the positive charge will be delocalized but in this particular case the positive charge will be delocalized to a greater extent and that's the reason we can say that you know option A should be your correct answer because the intermediate which is formed in that it is going to be resonance stabilized so it will be easily hydrolyzed it will be hydrolyzed at the fastest rate yes and finally last question here you need to identify A in the following reaction so here A is basically the aldehyde or it could be a ketone which is treated with NaOH win in I2 now the moment you come across this NaOH with I2 you must realize that it should be showing the positive iodoform test the positive iodoform test okay so compound A on treatment with NaOH with I2 is giving you compound B which on treatment with soda lime after heating you are getting simply benzene right now we know that the compounds which are capable of giving positive iodoform test okay they are usually methyl ketones or to a certain extent you could have ethanol or ethanol okay right these are the ones which usually give you the positive iodoform test now first and foremost thing here you are having this particular aldehyde group right it is not going to combine with NOH with I2 it is not going to give you the positive iodoform test so if A is not the correct answer option D is anyway ruled out so you have option B and option C now in option C 
you are having CH2OH, right? Benzyl alcohol and you are having CH3 group at its ortho position, right? And in option B, you are having what? The acetophenone, right? Now, you can clearly see that this is a methyl ketone. This is what? A methyl ketone. So, if this is a methyl ketone, which is obviously C C double bond O, CH3, right? When it is treated with NaOH in I2, you are going to get CHI3, right? So, CHI3 is going to be your ido form, definitely. And the byproduct which you are going to get here is going to be a sodium salt of benzoic acid, right? Now, this sodium salt of benzoic acid, when it is treated with soda lime, when I say soda lime, what is it? It is actually calcium oxide and NaOH. This is soda lime, right? So, you are heating the reaction mixture. There will be decarboxylation, which reaction will be taking place, okay? So, you are going to have this Na2CO3 getting removed. And hence, your outcome here is simply benzene ring. So definitely your answer is option B here, right? That is nothing but acetophenone. So students, I hope all of you got the clear understanding with respect to questions which are based on you know, the organic chemistry dealing with your grade 12. So that was all from my side for this session. Thank you very much.